The California Fish and Game Commission voted Wednesday to adopt a network of marine protected areas, or MPAs, from Santa Barbara to the Mexican border. Areas off San Diego County's coast will now be part of a statewide system of underwater parks. Joining me now to explain the changes is Eric Brickenstein. He's spokesperson for the San Diego Coast Keepers. Eric, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. How have the marine protected areas in San Diego County changed as a result of that vote? So the, the two most significant changes are at South La Jolla and at Swamis. Uh, we have a fully protected marine reserve at South La Jolla and what's known as a uh, state marine conservation area up at Swamis Reef. So what does this mean? What happens to an area that's designated a marine protection area? Okay, so essentially that's going to vary slightly depending on the level of protection. Uh, reserve, a red area, if you look on the map uh, that, that we're showing, um, represents a no-take zone. Okay, it's a fully protected reserve, so nothing in and nothing out. You mean I can't fish there? No. I can't swim there? You can swim there. Uh, Non-consumptive use won't be limited in any way. Consum so, Non-consumptive use? Non-consumptive, correct. So anything that's not extracting a resource from uh -huh. the area, okay. so all snorkeling, scuba diving, surfing, swimming, tide pooling, all of those will continue to be allowed. Okay, so what will people, let's say, can they, can they boat in those areas? Yes. They can? Yes. Okay, so just don't take things out. Exactly, don't take things out. How are these additional protections expected to help marine life in those areas? Well, in, in a variety of ways. Um, first and foremost, the idea behind this is to set aside these small areas to allow fish to grow larger. Uh, the larger fish are going to reproduce exponentially more. And uh, ideally, and, and presumably, there's, there's what's called a spillover effect. So density levels will, will saturate the protected areas and spill over into waters that are going to remain open for fishing. Well, what, kind, what species of fish are we talking about? So primarily, we're targeting um, species that are, that are targeted by fishermen that are in need of rehabilitation. Uh, California spiny lobster, uh, sheep's head, rockfish, etc. OK, yum. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> we want to keep them around. <laughs> how, how will the boundaries of the MPAs be identified by people who are out of the water? Mm -hmm. So the way the map is... Not been, out of, I mean out on the water. Out on the water. Yeah. Okay, so all of the GPS coordinates will be available at the Fish and Game website. Um, again, don't quote me on it, but I would, I would presume that Fish and Game will notify licensed fishermen of, of the new boundaries. And uh, the map has been drawn so that the boundaries are easily identifiable from shore and tend to line up with uh, longitude and, and latitude coordinates. This process was kind of interesting because mm -hmm. it was collaborative. Yes. I mean, it brought in people from the fishing industry and people who were conservationists and scientists. What compromises were actually made? Well, a lot of compromises. I mean, as with any process where, where various competing interest groups come together, but I think what's really unique and, and special about this process is that I feel like a lot of times there's this this assumption that it's a zero-sum game between consumption and conservation and the MLPA has really provided us with a unique opportunity to benefit you know all interest groups and and all users and, and I think that's something that's special about the legislation. So when does this all go into effect and how would I let's say if I, I were a fisher mm -hmm. how would I be notified? I believe that you would be notified by the Department of Fish and Game again if you're a licensed, if you're a licensed fisher person. And it's going to go into effect when? Uh, the governor intends to sign the legislation before he leaves office. So, the the current governor. The current governor. That's correct. And he leaves office on January third right. is when the so new governor takes so over. So its implementation is is imminent. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's going to be signed into law. Immediately, presumably, we sure hope so. The the commission has adopted it, and you know it's on its way to the governor's desk. Um, so. Any plans to assess the effectiveness of it? Yeah, absolutely. So just like we did out at the Channel Islands, um, actually, one of the things that's special about La Jolla is we have so much baseline data, and um, it, that will that will enable us to get a good starting point, and and we'll evaluate from there after about five years. Very good, Eric. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.